All right, 4.3 deals with Riemann sums and definite integrals. Uh, this is it's pretty similar to 4.2, except in 4.3 it takes into account um, if the graph goes uh, below the x-axis. So like if you see here, uh, this top graph would be like what you would have found in 4.2 where say you're finding the area under the curve um, from 0 to 2 then it would be taking into account all of this however if like this bottom graph would be 4.3 uh, what I'm going to present and instead of if it were to ask um, the area under evaluate the integral of this then you would actually be solving for all of that area however this wouldn't be representative of the area under the curve um, because of the negative because of these uh, this negative area right here this would this would be defined as the integral so um, the integral includes negative values, so that means that, uh, like on this one, you would do this would be a positive. This would give you some positive answer. This would give you some negative answer, and so to find out the integral, you would do this um, plus this, and so it would essentially be a positive and then minus whatever this area is. So say this area this area came out to be 5 and this area came out to be 2 your integral would be 3 However your the area definite integral however the area of this would be 7 For the area um, the values must be non-negative, and so the way I would think about it is uh, absolute value of what is above the x-axis. In this case, absolute value of 5 is 5. And then plus the absolute value of what's below the x-axis. And this is actually a negative 2 value. So the absolute value of negative 2 is 2, and so when you add those up you get 7, and that would be your area. So here's an example where um, that's going to be sh that can be seen. Uh, if we take a look at the graph of this, it's going to look something like this, and then um, you're going to be solving for the area from. Let's just say this is negative 2 right here, negative 1, and then 1. So you're solving for the integral from negative 2 to 1 by the limit process. So that means that we're going to be using this formula up here. First thing that you would do is just set up your formula, so the limit as n approaches infinity of sum of n i equals 1 of f of uh, delta xi times delta x. And now what we would solve for next is our change of x because we're going to need that for both parts. So you're, if you can recall from the last video, change of x just equals b minus a over n, uh, negative 2 minus 1 over n, or, excuse me, 1 minus negative 2 over n, so that becomes 3 over n, 
put that into our equation. Those just stay the same, and then it's f of now in this case when we're figuring out what's what our input value is going to be uh, because we're starting at negative 2 we're going to have to have a negative 2 right there um, say say this would have started at negative 1 we would have had to put a negative 1 right there because what you're what you're doing right here is you're you're getting that first, um, this specific one, this specific input, uh, is the first rectangle, uh, essentially the first rectangle. So the first rectangle is actually going to be at negative 2. So what you're going to be doing is negative 2 plus, and then you would do your change of x times i. So negative 2 plus 3i over n and then times your change of x your change of x is still just 3 over n and then if you plug this into your function because it says a uh, f of negative 2 plus 3i over n so just plug this into your original function, which is just multiply it by 2. So 2 times negative 2 plus 3i over n. And then you've still got that 3 over n right there. Um, you can multiply these two right there just to clean it up a little bit so you get the limit as n approaches infinity of this stuff and then 2 times 3 over n is 6 over n times negative 2 plus 3i over n you can like we learned in the last video you can bring that out to the front. So now you have uh, the limit as n approaches infinity of 6 over n times sum of n i equals 1 of negative 2 plus. I'm just going to simplify this right here. So. Um, this would be uh, negative 2 plus 3 over n times i. Uh, just to get the i by itself. Um, just rewriting everything that I have right now. Equals one of negative two uh, plus three over n, and now what we're going to do is just uh, make a summation substitution for i, and that if you uh, like I presented in the last video. Um, this is your summation formula for just i by itself. And then, so you'll have the limit as n approaches infinity. And then here we're going to just take, use our uh, knowledge of summation properties. So, um, what you have here would just be negative 2n and then plus uh, when you distribute all of this out then you get 
these actually cancel out. So you're left with three n plus three over two. And then when you do that, you'll get, uh, let's see, plus three n over two plus three over two. Do some distributive property. And so 6 over n times um, negative 2n. Uh, the n's can cancel out on that one, so you just get negative 12. Um, 6 over n uh, times 3n over 2. You get the ends would cancel out and you get plus 9 and then 6 over n times 3 over 2 would equal plus uh, the 6 and the 2 can reduce so you get 9 over n and now when you take the limit of this you get uh, well, I guess let's simplify it a little bit more. Negative 3 plus 9 over n. As n approaches infinity, if n approaches infinity right here, then that's 9 over infinity, which equals, which would just equal 0. And so, negative 3 plus 0 would just equal negative 3. And that is your definite integral. Now keep in mind that uh, this is your definite integral. Uh, this does not represent the area under the curve. Um, to find the area under the curve you would have had to uh, find out this section right here separate from this section um, and then take the absolute value of both and add them up and that would give you the actual area under the curve. So I have I have another example and some uh, just some other properties that are in 4.3 um, I'm running out of time on this video, so I'm just going to put it in a second video. Uh, so yeah, hopefully um, the main part, if you can uh, get anything out of this one, is that to remember to do that, um, that starting x value. So like I said, if this negative 2 would have been a negative 1, then this would have been a negative 1 right here. So it would have been negative 1 plus 3i over n. Whenever, whenever the, uh, the integral you're solving for does not start at 0, you're going to have to um, compensate for that by either uh, by starting, um, by adding your uh, starting value. Um, this that means even if this negative 2 was a positive 2 then you still would have had to include that within your uh, within this little section right here except it would just be 2 plus 3i over n. Um, you'll see that in the next example as well so hopefully after that one you'll become quite familiar with it. <laughs>